Howdy friends, vinyl community, music lovers, welcome to a new episode of the Vinyl Survivor. I believe we're up to episode number 85. If you're a new subscriber, welcome to the channel. Hope you enjoy these Vinyl Survivor videos. This is where I talk about records that I bought that are sort of first listens, new listens to me. Uh, run down some of my thoughts on each one, give you a bit of the history on each one, and let you know whether I like them and whether they're going to be staying in the collection or not. So let's go ahead and get into this episode. First album we have to talk about here is the debut album from Carol King. This is titled Writer from 1970. A uh, very interesting debut album from Carol King. Features the hit song Up on the Roof. Uh, but this is a very a very different album than I expected to to get from Carol King. I expected this to be a little more singer songwritery, folky. This has a little bit of a rock and roll edge to it, and I really enjoyed that. So I was really happy to hear this album. Great album. Definitely one to pick up if you find it. And this is on the A&M Ode Records label. Not too much else going on with the with the Dead Wax. Just a nice clean copy of this uh, debut album from from Carol King. So uh, that's a that's a pretty cool one. As I said, it rocks a little more than you would expect, and it, it's it's a really good album. So definitely one to have in the collection. All right, moving on, we have an album from Carly Simon. This is her tenth album, titled Torch from 1981. Uh, this is from when the time period of when she was getting divorced from James Taylor. James Taylor did play on that debut album from Carol King, so kind of links these two together a, a bit. Uh, but this is an album of standards from her, but very beautifully produced, beautifully recorded, uh, just a, a wonderful sounding album. There's a track on here called uh, I Get Along With You Very Well. Or, I Get Along Without You Very Well, I guess. So she, she really embraces these songs and these sort of heart-wrenching jazz singer uh, kind of songs, you know, going through a divorce, going through rough times, and she really embraces these. Even though these songs aren't hers, she really embraces them really well, uh, does an excellent job singing them, uh, and you can tell she really believes in what she's saying, so it's not just a, a very generic covers album kind of thing so I, I did enjoy this quite a bit finishes with a, a Stephen Sondheim piece not a day goes by which was really cool really different set, uh, set itself apart from the rest of the album I always love that when a when a closing track is just sort of something completely different than what else you have heard in the you know from the rest of the album interior you get a nice uh, insert with lyrics on it and this is on the Warner Brothers record label 1A stampers on both sides of this one, so this is, I guess, the first pressing of this. So yeah, Carly Simon's Torch, definitely very good. If you, uh, if you like, you know, like modern stuff like Adele or uh, Amy Winehouse, kind of, you know, modern jazzy kind of stuff, check this one out, it's really good. Or going back to like a, a Shirley Bassey or something uh, kind of thing. So really cool album, definitely glad to have this one in the collection. Okay, next up, moving backwards in Carly Simon's catalog, we have her second album from 1971. This is titled Anticipation. Of course, features that hit song Anticipation of hers, very well-known song. Uh, also, Legend in Your Own Time was a pretty, uh, pretty big song. Just a, a really uh, great album. The entirety of Side 2, even though there's not a hit on Side 2, I just loved Side 2. It opens with "Share the End," which is probably my favorite track on the whole album. If you ever, if you've never heard uh, "Share the End" uh, by Carly Simon, check that one out. It features this cool sort of uh, metallic blue cover. Uh, really like that. Uh, just a great album. I can see why this was a hit for her, and uh, definitely going to be a good one to keep in the collection. Some nice photographs in there, and some nice lyrics. This is why I love records. <laughs> just. So much detail, so much, uh, th so much to look at and enjoy and feel, and it's just, just, just so much fun. And this is on the wonderful Atlant or, or not Atlantic Electra Butterfly label. Uh, love this label to death. Some great albums on this label. Uh, we got Sterling L H in the Dead Wax. So that's Lee Holko at Sterling did the mastering on this one. Yeah, that's Carly Simon's Anticipation. Uh, check it out if you haven't already. It's a great album. Definitely stick around for Side 2. Uh, Side 2 is just incredible all the way through, I think. So, uh, great album going in the collection. 
Okay, next up we have a, another debut album, even though this artist was well known well before this album came out, but this is the debut solo album from Lionel Richie from 1982, self-titled. Uh, this featured the songs Truly, You Are, and My Love, all were big hits for him. He even signed it for me now. <laughs> um, but yeah, just a great well-known album from Lionel Richie. I mean, you know whether or not you love Lionel Richie or not, I think probably most people experienced his music in the past, and it's it's pretty much standard what you'd expect from Lionel Richie. Uh, this album features a lot of guest, great guest artists on here. You got Kenny Rogers, Richard Marks, Thomas Dolby is on here doing some synth work, and Joe Walsh plays on here as well. So, so just a cool album, great album through and through. Uh, I, I like Lionel Richie, I got a soft spot for him, so... Uh, this one is going to be staying in the collection. The insert has l just printed lyrics on it, liner notes, and Lionel Richie is on the Motown record label. So that's Lionel Richie's solo debut album, self-titled, staying in the collection. All right, the next thing we have here is a greatest hits album from Blood, Sweat, and Tears from 1972. Uh, you got things like... Uh, You've made me so very happy, spinning wheel, love you more than you'll ever know. Uh, kind of an odd greatest hits. It's very early, I would say, in their career to, to have a greatest hits album, but I guess at this point they had enough where they could make a greatest hits album. Uh, maybe they were having trouble and record, sh record uh, company wanted to put something out there to keep their name in the out in the in the world there so they put this greatest hits out uh just a, a cool collection of their songs i'm more of a fan of chicago when you're talking about this kind of horn rock kind of sound i'm more of a fan of chicago than i am a fan of blood sweat and tears but i do enjoy blood sweat and tears just as well and uh it's, it's cool to have a greatest hits and this one is on the columbia red and orange label uh, nothing of interest in the dead wax blood sweat and tears greatest hits really nice clean copy of this i'm going to keep this for now enjoy it pulled out from time to time but yeah just some good horn rock kind of music kind of sound uh, great on a Sunday morning uh, breakfast time brunch time uh, good stuff so all right next up we have an album from Mimi Farina and Tom Jans this is Take Heart from 1971 it's sort of a folksy duo here a little bit different Mimi Farina is usually with her husband Tom or not Tom Richard Richard Farina, they do a duo, sort of folk folk, folk duo on uh, the Vanguard label here, but this is a, a duo she did with uh, Tom on the A&M record label. Maybe a little bit more country than uh, her music with Richard, but still good, still enjoyable. Uh, I, I just a really nice folksy country sort of early 70s uh, singer-songwriter duo kind of thing here. A&M, Brown Label, Mimi Farina and Tom Jans, Take Heart. I'm going to be keeping this one in the collection. As I said, I, I did enjoy hearing it. It's a good album. That's about all I have to say about that one. <laughs> okay, speaking of Mimi and Richard Farina, here we go. The best of Mimi and Richard Farina on Vanguard from 1971 as well. Uh, two LP set in one of these nice Vanguard collections that they, they like to do that are really nice to have. Uh, got some nice photography there in the gatefold and yeah, these are much more standard folk duo kind of songs uh, Mimi has a, a, an amazing voice and uh, just a, they make a good duo they the Vanguard label beautiful label uh, these Vanguard records are always beautifully pressed beautifully made you could tell there was a lot of care put into care put into making these and uh, they're they're just always enjoyable pieces so once again, some more early 70s folksy kind of things. This whole this whole episode is, has sort of a folksy kind of theme to it, singer-songwriter theme. But this is a, a nice collection of their music. Uh, I, I don't love it enough to where I'll seek out a lot of, of Mimi and Richard Farina albums, but I do have a few more in the inbox to get to, and I, I enjoyed this one, so I'm glad I have some more to more to explore in the future but this one is going to be staying as a, it's a, a best of kind of thing so that's a, a good one to have okay moving on we have something uh, a little bit different but not too far off the path here this is an album from jose feliciano this is 
uh, from 10 to 23. It does have sort of an interesting embossed cover. I think that might be kind of blown out there. Hopefully maybe you can catch a little bit of that. Uh, but this is just, uh, I, I'm not real familiar with Jose Feliciana to tell you the truth. I just grabbed this because I thought it was an interesting looking cover. I saw that he does covers of Hey Jude and Lady Bandana on here. So it's always interesting to hear Beatles, uh, Beatles covers as well as some other covers on here, Miss Otis Regrets, By the Time I Get to Phoenix, Windmills of Your Mind, uh, Little Red Rooster. So yeah, this is Jose Feliciano. He's a, a Latin guitarist, and I wasn't that impressed with this, really. I was kind of bored by it. He, he plays well, but it just wasn't really for me. So I didn't, I didn't really enjoy this. I'm not going to be keeping this in the collection. Uh, I enjoyed hearing it. I, I grabbed this at Goodwill one day, so it was. I think that was still when they were selling them for 50 cents. So I didn't spend a lot for this. It was it was interesting to hear, but it's not going to be staying in the collection. RCA Victor. It's it's got an orange label to it, so I'm thinking maybe this is a, a repress in the 70s sometime. This album was originally released in '69. I don't know if I said that or not. And I should mention that the the opening track on the album is Amor Gibaro. And that is an actual recording of Jose Feliciano playing at 10 years old. So it's very, it's a very rough sounding recording. Uh, but it's kind of interesting to sort of hear him uh, as a young boy playing music. So that's Jose Feliciano from 10 to 23. Not staying in the collection, but an interesting, uh, interesting listen nonetheless. It, it wasn't, it wasn't totally off-putting where I had to rip it off the turntable anyway. All right, moving on, still staying in sort of the folk range, though. This is a solo album from John Stewart of the Kingston Trio. This is titled The Lonesome Picker Rides Again from 1971. Uh, this is John Stewart after he left the Kingston Trio, had a, a country, very standard country singer uh, career. So this is very straight ahead, sort of early 70s country music. Uh, again, interesting to hear. It, it wasn't totally off-putting to me, but not something I want to keep in the collection. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. It was good, but uh, not real big on country in general, uh, particularly male country artists. It's cool to hear some of his later work, but uh, this one's not staying. This one did come with a poster, a photo, and lyrics on it. I don't know why they didn't just make this into the uh, the inner sleeve, but they didn't just has a plain paper inner or not plain paper but you know just sort of an advertising Warner Brothers Lost Leaders kind of sleeve there and this is on that dark green uh, army green Warner Brothers record label uh, so that's John Stewart Lonesome Picker Rides Again not staying in the collection and last but not least one more from John Stewart here this is his album titled Cannons in the Rain from 1973 so this is two years after the Lonesome Picker uh, once again, straight ahead sort of country music here. Not too much to say about this one. Once again, it was it was okay. I, I enjoyed listening to it, but it's not something I will be keeping in the collection. And this has a RCA Dynaflex label, but it's not it's not that thin. I mean, it, it feels like a standard standard weight piece of vinyl. It doesn't feel it's not super thin. It's not super heavy. It's just sort of in the middle. RCA records here. Uh, nothing nothing too interesting in the dead wax nothing to note in the dead wax anyway uh, so that's John Stewart cannons in the rain not gonna be staying in the collection but uh, an enjoyable listen and if you're into country music maybe this will be something you would enjoy so thank you for watching episode 85 of the vinyl survivor just can't believe we're all the way up to 85 at this point it's been a good run Got a lot more to talk about here. I'm always listening to new music, playing new records, buying new records as you see. I buy a lot and I'm always enjoying hearing new things constantly. So that's that's what I'm after is to constantly be hearing new things. So that's what this series is all about. Uh, finding out what I like and what I don't like. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're not already and we'll see you again next time. Cheers.